Hello Synapse ICD fans! Welcome to this video series on Synapse ICD. My name is Rui Cunha and I'm a support escalation engineer on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. Integrating your workspace with a distributed version control system like Kit will give you the flexibility you need to share and manage code. When altering your code in Synapse Studio, your team should find a balance between this flexibility and the need to collaborate and share code in a consistent manner. All team members should publish, review, and iterate on code changes through Git branches, shared with others. In Synapse, you should adopt a branching strategy for your team so they can collaborate better and spend less time managing version control and more time developing their code. In this video, we'll be demonstrating how you can keep your branching strategy in Synapse very simple, implementing some concepts that will result in a version control workflow for your team that is consistent and easy to follow. Let's watch the demo and see how you can achieve this. Working collaboratively and tracking code changes in Synapse Studio can be quite challenging. You can look at Synapse Studio as a front-end to an integrated analytics platform. Here we combine data warehousing, big data analytics, data integration, visualization. So having multidisciplinary teams here interacting with all these cap capabilities in different projects, different features, it will require to collaborate and share code in a consistent manner. This is where adopting a simple branching strategy for your team is key for a successful continuous integration of your code in Synapse Studio. You want to apply a branching strategy that avoids contradictions, will result in a version control workflow for your team that is consistent and easy to follow. In this video, I will show you a simple branch strategy that you can adopt in Synapse. So let's start by using feature branches. Feature branches or topics, they are helpful when you want to isolate your work in progress from the completed work in your main branch. When you hit the branch selector here in Synapse Studio, you can differentiate this collaboration branch from other feature branches by this icon here with this blue star. This branch represents your collaboration branch, your shared code base. You want to keep this branch a high quality and up to date branch. Okay. This is the branch that you want to build cleanly and always be current. Your main branch needs these qualities so that your feature branches created by your developers they start from a good known version of a code. So you need to prevent as much interactions with this branch, direct check-ins and the feature branch, they will do the work. So to create this feature branch, you can use this branch selector in Synapse and click here on the new branch and you can create a branch based on whatever branch you have here. In Synapse Studio, the workspace publish branch is not editable, so it will not appear here in this branch list. So right now, since I have this main branch only, I will create my feature branch. And I can you can give, for example, your developer's name and then feature one, for example as a naming convention. So I'm going to create this branch. And now in the branch selector, you can see this branch already. And if you go here to DevOps repo, you will see under my folder name, my feature branch. And this feature branch was created based on main. So all the stru folder structure that exists in main branch will be replicated to my feature branch. So now I'm ready to start on a new feature. So suppose that I want to create a new SQL script. OK, 
Okay, based on my serverless pool, a simple slip script like select one plus one, for example. Now, when I commit these changes, I will see these changes reflected here in my feature branch under the SQL script folder. Here it is. Now, look at the publish button that is disabled from any branch except your collaboration branch. So you cannot publish your code from a feature branch, only from collaboration. Now, that's where the second step for your branching, branching strategy comes in, using pull requests. So now you need to merge your feature branch into the main branch using a pull request. In pull requests, you can use code review. And the review that takes place in a pull request is critical for improving code quality. You should only merge your branches through a pull request that pass your review process. To create a pull request in Synapse Studio, you can use the branch selector and select the create pull request option here. And by using this pull request, you can merge your changes from your source branch into destination. In this case, from my feature branch into my collaboration branch. And you can see the files involved in this pull request. You can review this code. You can see the commit as well. And you can ask your reviewers to approve this, this pull request as a best practice. You can link this pull request to any work, any work item. Okay. In this case, I, I have this process as much simple as possible, so I don't have any code reviewer right now. I'm keeping this process simple, but you should have these reviewers in place, okay, for the approval process to, to start. So now I'm going to approve my pull request and to complete. When I complete, I can select here the merge type. I will keep this as the, as the standard merge no fast forward. And in terms of post completion options, I hope to delete my feature branch after merging. I don't want to keep um, too much feature branches here in my, in my branching strategy to avoid any garbage. So in the, in the, in the repo, in this case, I don't need the feature branch anymore, so I will delete after completing the pull request. So now when I complete the pull request, my, merge, my changes from feature branch will be merged to my collaboration branch, main. And now that this pull request is completed, I added my SQL script. I can close this window. And when I switch to the main branch here in Synapse Studio. I will see my SQL script one here available in this branch and the publish button will now be enabled so I can publish my changes. One thing that you can do prior to the publish operation is just to use the validate all link to start the workspace validation and see if there is any inconsistent code before publishing your changes. Now that the workspace validation is clear, so I'm going to hit the publish button and here it is, the pending changes that were flagged, depending on the changes that were merged to the main branch or the collaboration branch, you will see these painting changes reflected here. So now I'm going to hit the publish button for my pending changes. Only the SQL script will be published. And once the SQL script is published to live mode, 
the publish operation will start the second stage, let's call it this way, the ARM template generation to the publish branch. So now the publish operation save this SQL script in the service live mode. So here it is, the SQL script one. It was saved in live mode. And if we go here to the branches in the workspace publish, we should see under the workspace name, the folder, you should see the template, the two ARM templates generated by the publish operation. And this will be the outcome of your continuous integration workflow, let's call it this way, in Synapse Studio. These ARM templates, they represent the outcome of your continuous integration lifecycle in Synapse, and they will represent the input, the starting point for your continuous delivery of artifacts in Synapse. We will see this continuous delivery stage in a later stage in, in another video. Thanks for watching this video. We would love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you up on the next one.